So welcome again to my channel. This is the part two of the YF2 2021 physics practical, the electricity part, and that is question three. Uh, if you have not watched part one, please watch part one before you watch this so that you can understand what we are doing here. I had explained in part one uh, some things concerning the electricity, more like a recap of what many people believe uh, will be coming out, based on the fact that this particular instruction was uh, given uh, some years back and uh, uh, particular experiment was performed based on the materials. Uh, in 2006, uh, basically in 1994, we had the first question that tallied with these materials and the question was repeated in 2006. The question was also repeated in 2013. Uh, based on this, everyone believes that the same question will be repeated in 2021. But I believe that YX is not uh, out of stock with questions, so they don't know what to do. And I strongly believe that there's going to be a little adjustment or variation to what we should expect uh, on the 24th of this month uh, concerning this question three, which is the electricity. However, I discussed in detail the first possibility of this question, and that is in part one. So what I'm about to discuss here is the second possibility. Now this is the diagram for the experiment. You will recall that in part one, the uh, ammeter was to measure the entire current in the circuit. But in this diagram, the ammeter will be measuring the current that flows through the resistor alone. All right? So that's just the difference between these and what you had in 1994, 2006, and 2013. The current will be measuring, or the ammeter will be measuring the current that flows through the resistor. Now, uh, so in this experiment, as you vary the length of the constant time wire, the current flowing through the ammeter will also change. And in a short while, we're explaining to you what you should expect. If you reduce the length of the constant wire, are you expecting the current flowing through the resistor to increase or reduce? So does it mean that the ammeter reading will be increasing or will it be reducing? I will explain that in a short while. Now, what is the aim of this experiment? This experiment can be used to determine the resistance or the resistivity of the constant power wire. And for those who are teachers, uh, one of the things you should expect in your report uh, that the wire could demand from you is the resistivity of the constant power wire and the type of constant power wire you have used. In previous years, wire usually specify the type of constant time wire to be given uh, to the student. Uh, they can say maybe SWG, that is standard weight gauge 36 or 32 or 30 or 28. Each of these standard weight gauge of the constant time wire have their own diameter and resistivity or resistance. Okay, but in this particular year, they gave everyone the liberty to choose the constant wire to
to be used. Uh, this is the reason why I strongly believe that what we had in previous years may not exactly be what we'll be having uh, this year. All right? So they gave everyone the liberty to choose whatever constant hour. So if you have SWG20, use it. Okay? If you have SWG24 uh, or 22, use it. This is just a curb exam my practice you know for those who will always be uh, expecting some persons to send uh, a table of values to them rather than performing their own experiment this is where they will be caught because the table of value at the end of the day what you'll be getting will differ from what uh, the report that your teacher will be sending to wire based on the constant wire that you have used, all right? Now, don't forget that in this circuit, the constantan wire and the resistor are still connected in parallel. So meaning that the current flowing through the circuit will be shared by the constantan wire and the resistor, all right? So uh, the difference between this circuit and the previous one is that the current will still be shared, but the ammeter will only be taking the current that is flowing through the resistor. Only. All right. So the, the constant wire and the resistor are still connected in parallel. And so the ammeter recalls the current flowing through the resistor. Now, what is the background theory behind this experiment? Now, the background theory is that the current flowing through the resistor, sorry, the current flowing through the circuit, let's call it I naught, is equal to I plus IC. What is I? I've used, decided to use I to represent the current flowing through the resistor, and IC to represent the current flowing, flowing through the rest, uh, constant power wire, right? But don't forget that I naught is the current flowing through the circuit and is equal to E over R, where E is the EMF of the cell, and R is the total resistance in the circuit, including the internal resistance of the cell. Okay? Now, don't forget that the constant wire and the resistor, the two ohms resistor, are connected in parallel. But that parallel connection is in series with the internal resistance of the cell. So the total resistance in the circuit is represented by R. So E over R gives us the current uh, flowing through the circuit. That IC, which is equal to E over RC, is the current flowing through the constant wire. All right? Where RC is the resistance of the constant wire, and E is the EMF of the cell. Don't forget that the constant wire and the two ohm starter resistor are connected in parallel. So they have the same potential difference. So the EMF of the cell is the same if you have 3 volts. The 3 volt is connected across the constant wire. The same 3 volt is connected across the two ohm resistor because they're in parallel. All right. So if you put this back to the equation, you have ER equals to I plus E over RC. Now, RC, which is the resistance of the constant wire, is equal to rho L over A. Rho is resistivity of the wire, L is the length of the wire, and A is the cross-sectional area of the wire. Is that clear now? So, this is what you have. So, put, if you now put uh, the resistance of the constant wire back into the equation, you have E over R equals to I plus AE over rho L. We are arranging the equation by making I the subject of the formula. You have I equals E over R plus AE over rho L. Now, the only variable in this equation are I and L. E, which is the EMF of the cell, is constant. R, which is the total resistance in the circuit, is constant. 
A, which is the cross-sectional area of the cosantal wire, is constant. And rho, which is the resistivity of the wire, is also constant. So I can still rearrange this, uh, this equation to give me I equals AE over rho L plus E over R. I, therefore, will be equal to minus, okay? That is minus AE over rho L plus E over R. And then I will be equal to AE over rho plus 1 over L plus E over R. Now, AE over rho gives us the slope. And from this equation, you can see that the slope is going to be negative. The slope is going to be negative. So this is also different from uh, what we have in previous years. In previous years, we're going to have a positive slope. But in this one, we're going to have a negative slope in this particular circuit. Then your intercept will be E over R, where E is EMF of the cell, and R is, in this case, R is uh, the, uh, what is it called? The total resistance uh, in the in the circuit, the total resistance in the circuit. All right. So, if you plot the graph of I on the vertical axis against inverse of L on the horizontal axis, your slope will be A E over rho, and your intercept will be E over R. So, from the slope and the intercept any deduction can be made. You can have the slope over the intercept. You can have the intercept over the slope. You can be asked to determine the slope separately and the intercept separately. Okay? You can, any manipulations can be made depending on what the examiner is trying to achieve. Right? But if you are plotting I against the inverse of L in this circuit, Using this circuit, you are going to have a negative slope. And this is how your graph should look like. Okay, so this graph shows that you have a negative slope. Now, what trend should you expect? All right, now, as the length of the constantown wire reduces, if you reduce the length of the constantown wire, the resistance of the constantown wire reduces. Okay? Now, don't forget the constantown wire is in parallel with the 2 ohm resistor. So, as the resistance of the constantown wire reduces, the current flowing through the constantown wire will increase. And since they are sharing the current, since the current is being shared with the 2 ohm resistor, you will expect the current flowing through the resistor to reduce. Exactly now. Therefore, as you reduce the length of the constantown wire, the current flowing through the resistor will also reduce. Okay? If you are to be increasing the length of the constantown wire, it means that the current flowing through the resistor will also increase because as you increase the length of the constantown wire, the resistance of the constantown wire increases. And then the current flowing through the constantown wire will reduce. So you will expect the current flowing through the resistor to increase. All right. Okay, so the trend is such that if you reduce the length of the constantown wire, the current at the ammeter reading will also reduce. If you increase the length of the constantown wire, the ammeter reading will also increase. All right. Now, if you are a teacher and you are to set up this for your students, you can use any type of constantown wire because a particular type is not specified. But you must make sure that all your students use the same type of constantown wire. If you are giving your student SWG32, make sure everyone is using SWG32. If you are giving your student SWG24, make sure everyone is using SWG24. 
24. Alright? Now, this is what I believe uh, I will be bringing on the 24th. Why do I think so? Because of the emphasis on the fact that the, the amateur reading should be, uh, sorry, the amateur given to the student should be 0 to 1 ampere. Now, if you check the previous years, if you go by that experiment, you'll find out that there's no way you, your readings can be less than 1 ampere by reducing the length of the constantown wire if you use a 3 volt uh, a 3 volt uh, uh, dry cell. Alright, but this particular year, number one, the constantown wire to be used is not specified, so you have liberty to use any one. And the, ex uh, the, the examination body has also emphasized that whether you are using the 3 volt uh, dry cell or you are using 2 volt uh, accumulator, you will still have your readings less than 1 ampere. In that case, this can only be possible if you use this circuit where you have the resistance, uh, sorry, the, the ammeter reading reducing as you reduce uh, the length of the constant wire. And this is the only condition where you can have the ammeter reading reducing as you reduce the length of the constant wire. I I want to thank you for listening, but please do not forget to subscribe. If you have not subscribed, just click the subscribe button. It does not cost you anything to subscribe. This is because each time anything is posted, you can benefit from it. Uh, within the week, I will be posting some fantastic things on uh, question two, which is the optics. It will shock you what I will be revealing to you. But make sure you subscribe so as soon as it's posted, you can uh, take advantage of it. Thank you.